Breaking news tonight, the coronavirus forcing millions more Americans into virtual lockdown. Over 75 million people in New York, California, Illinois, and Connecticut ordered to stay at home. Tonight, schools across the country empty. The rush to contain COVID-19 giving millions of parents a brand new job. A humanitarian crisis is unfolding in Central America tonight. Honduras is being hammered by powerful winds. Keep in mind the Trump campaign is in the midst of waging legal challenges in several states, but the path is clear for the new president-elect. Millions of Americans have marched under the banner of Black Lives Matter demanding justice and equality. What if, what if there was a meeting that took place a little over 2,000 years ago in heaven? What if there was a meeting that took place between Michael, the archangel of God, and another angel named Raphael? What if? Well, Raphael, I understand you have a report for me, so uh, you have my attention. Let me, uh, let me have the report. Well, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Let me tell you, first of all, sir, it is such a delight to speak to an archangel. I mean, I never thought in a million years I'd speak to an archangel. Here I am. Raphael, just the report. Oh. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Now, now uh, sir, you have the whole report right there in front of you, so you can look at the detail. I'm, I'm just going to cover, you know, the, the, the most important, you know, the salient points. Okay? Okay. Okay, so now uh, we, we've categorized our report in, in five categories, and the first category is, is children. Now, now, this is the fourth division of the angelic host statistical uh, analysis division. And, and we've worked for quite some time on this report. We've studied the whole world and, and we've come up with this report. The, the, first, the first category is children. And it's not good news. Uh, 50 percent of the children born... Don't, don't live to be one years of age. And of those that do, sir, um, only, only 30% make it to the 10th birthday. And those that make it there, their, their lives are, are, are not good. They, 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 they are used. They are neglected. They are abused. The life of a child on planet Earth is, it's, it's largely tragic, sir. It's, it's not it's, it's not good news. I, I, I'm not saying anymore. You, you have research there you can read. Okay, okay. That, that's, uh, that's, that's sad, but please continue. Oh, okay, okay, well, the, the, um, you know, the next, the next category we studied was uh, this, this human institution called slavery. Oh, my. And it's, it's hard to put a figure on how many are enslaved at any time because it changes every, every hour, it seems. But, but it's safe to say that 30% that of the world's population are enslaved at any given time. Now, that this happens primarily because a city or a country loses in a war. And, and when a country or a city loses, everybody that lives in that country or lives in that city are hauled away to the conquering city to be slaves. Well, one day, 50,000 slaves went to Rome because their country lost. It is, it is tragic beyond words. Now, you, you have more reports there. I mean, you, you can read the detail. Uh, the, the, the third category is a little hard to, to, to put numbers on because it's more of a, a, a cultural thing. It, it seems that on the face of the earth, there's 
there's no respect for human life. People kill one another wantonly. They, they sell even their sons and daughters into slavery. Women and girls are used and abused and, and thrown away. Uh, countries uh, have famine and starvation where neighboring countries could help, but they don't. They, they watch entire peoples just perish. There's, there's no respect. For, for the dignity of human life, there's, there's no understanding that, that the people living all around them were also created in the image of, of, of God. It's, it's, oh, sir, it's, it's deeply saddening. Well, it is. It is. And I, I appreciate your report. You have a couple more categories. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, two, two more categories. The, the next category is... Uh, I don't know what better way to say than just slaughter, sir. Uh, there is uh, millions and millions and millions of people that die every year, uh, largely because of war, where one country wars against another country, and they conquer, and they ransack, and they kill, and they carry away into slavery. But sometimes... It's within the same country where you've got this general that wants to be the emperor and this general that wants to be the emperor, and they come against each other with 100,000 men each, and half of them die. They just cut one another down. You've got detail there in your report. It lists cities and countries and the numbers. It's just overwhelming. And the last category... Oh my, oh my, the last category is, it's, it's just, we, we know, we know our Lord to be kind and loving and forgiving and gracious and compassionate and just and righteous and holy. We know this, but, but the people on earth that, that are representing God or appointing themselves to represent God, don't teach these things. They pervert who God is. There's, there's all kinds of countries and cultures where, where, where the Lord is portrayed as angry and vengeful. And, and as a result, the people sacrifice their little boys and their little girls and human sacrifice to, to appease this angry God. And in even the nation where God has spent the most amount of time trying to teach who he is, even there, they, they, they've developed this long list of, of laws and they, they prioritize the laws and they've, they've made great penalties for breaking these laws. And, and, and they teach that, that, that that's all God's interested in is obeying these laws and they've forgotten his grace. And they've forgotten his love. And it's, they've perverted who God is and what God wants to do. There, there's no one that represents him well. You, you've got more material in the report there, sir, but that's, that's the gist of it. Well, that's, uh, Raphael, that's, uh, that's, that's quite a report. Now, that's the conclusion. Well, it is the conclusion of the findings, sir. Now, now we move on to the recommendations. Recommendations? Oh, oh yes, sir. The, the things we would recommend doing. <laughs> um, recommendations. You... You seek to give counsel to the Lord then. Oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. We don't want to do, no. Oh, no, we don't want to do that. We, we just, we, we thought we would just, having done all this work, and since it's fresh in our minds, we thought we'd suggest some things that maybe he, maybe you and he, maybe, maybe just you, I mean, just would want to consider. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, let's, let's hear the recommendations. Okay, now, now the first recommendation is, is one that, you know, God already 
wanted to do, you remember when God wanted to wipe out everybody and start all over again with Moses? Well, that's our first recommendation is do that. Let's just, let's just bring all of human life to an end. Let's nullify all of human life. Nullify? Oh, yes, sir. I mean, by that I mean we could, we could zero off their lives in such a way that they don't even remember that they were. And we just, just, just zero them out. Well, okay, so if, 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 if that recommendation is followed, the, the second recommendation would be if, if the Lord wants to try this again. Well, we have searched the universe and we found 27 other planets that are largely compatible with human life. Uh, but, but if he wants to create a new planet, I mean, he can do that in a moment, so he could do that. What we don't recommend is if he wipes out human life, we don't recommend using Earth again. We, we, think, it, we think it would be best to start from scratch and, 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 and not use the Earth. Okay, then. Well, then, then the, 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 the third recommendation would be, uh, we recommend that he doesn't try it again. <laughs> we, we, we think... Uh, we, we think that doing it once was a good idea. I mean, he learned a lot, and we learned a lot watching him, but um, it, it doesn't need to be done again. After all, he has all the heavenly hosts that he can love and he can lead, and uh, he, he won't need to do it again. That's our recommendation, you see. You see. You, you see. So, you, you'll, you'll take the report to him? <laughs> no. No, Raphael, I, I, I don't think I'll take the report to him. Oh, oh, well. Oh. Well, well, well can I ask why, sir? <laughs> well, you know, I, I don't think you understand how much he loves these people and, and the fact that he refuses to give up on them. Oh, well, I, I, I understand, and I'll tell you, we all think that's admirable. Admirable. But, 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 We've studied this, it, and, and, and the, the human situation is just going down and down and down. And Well, the data shows that it's just going to degrade. It's going to get worse and worse and worse. And we're just trying to save him the, the, the heartbreak, you see? <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, I get that. But there's another reason I'm not going to bring him this report. Oh, what is that? <laughs> he has launched a new offensive, an exciting one, a very stealthy one. Oh, oh, well then, can you tell me more? Well, I suppose I can because it's already in play. It's, it's already taken place. <laughs> this is genius. This is ge only the Lord could have come up with this plan. God the Son, Jesus. Jesus has agreed to allow himself to be shrunk all the way down to one cell. One cell. And this one cell was placed in a in, in a tomb of a virgin girl. And any day now, a, a baby boy will be born <laughs> that will be fully God and fully man. Wow. wow.
praise be to him. Wow. You, you, you see, he won't give up on them. He, he loves them too much. Hey, you know, um, we are about to send uh, a, a, a host of angels to, to sing a, a welcome to Jesus. Uh, I could arrange it. Would you like to go with them? Oh, would I like to go with them? Oh, oh, oh yes. Yes, I would. Uh, yes, I'll go. We'll sing. Good. Well, where will we sing? In the temple, sir? In Jerusalem? No. Oh, well, then in the palace. No. Well, uh, Rome, probably Rome, right? No. No, you will sing outside of a small town named Bethlehem. Oh, oh. Oh, outside of a small town of Bethlehem. Hmm. Well, why would the high priest and the officials and all the important people go there? <laughs> well, they won't. Well, then who do we sing to? You'll sing to shepherds. Just shepherds. A handful of shepherds. Our friend... The evangelist Luke writes this story with such poetry. I don't think it can be improved upon, so allow me to read it to you. From the Gospel of Luke, the second chapter, first 20 verses. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. Now, this was the first census, census that took place while Quirinius was the governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judah, to, a, to Bethlehem, a, a town of David, because he belonged to the house and lineage of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, as she was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. For today in the town of David, a Savior has been born, has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and singing glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to whom his favor rests. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. 
And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. In just a moment, we'll begin to light your candles representing the light of the world that was born on this night more than 2,000 years ago. Just a couple words of, of, of caution. As you are having your candle lit, if you have a lit candle, just hold it right up and down. Don't bend it over or you'll spill wax just like I just did right there. So hold it straight. And the person who is having their candle lit will bend their candle and have it lit and light one another's candles, would you? Truly he taught us to love one another. His law is love. And his gospel is peace. Chain shall he break, for the slave is our brother, and in his name all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy. In grateful chorus raise we let all within us praise his holy name. Christ is the Lord. Oh, praise his name for him. More than 2,000 years ago, light was given to us. It's vulnerable. One little candle can be easily snuffed out. But as the years rolled by and decades became centuries and centuries became millennia, more and more lights were lit. And now all of us represent the love in the light of Christ to take him to our world in the middle of a pandemic that cannot squelch the hope that we have. So I invite you 
to love when it would be easier to hate. I invite you to forgive when it would be easier to mark down their score on a scoreboard and find a way to get even. I invite you to lay down your life in love as he has done. Would you pray with me? Our Father in heaven, we thank you that out of your love you sent your son to us. And we thank you. And we pray that we would represent him well. I pray that this Christmas would find each of us loving, forgiving, giving, perhaps as we never have before. And I pray this all in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.